director, he's a screenwriter and an editor. He made the feature documentary Loot in 2008. He co-wrote the screenplay for a film we presented in 2012, directed by Derek Sanfrance, called The Place Beyond the Pines. For this film, not only is the screenplay, the story remarkable, but he's put together uh, an incredible cast of actors as well, including Olivia Cook. Man, a master of so many skills, Riz Ahmed. <laughs> Paris is here to introduce the film to you tonight. You're the very first audience in the world to see it. Please join me in welcoming Darius Carter.
what is a remarkable achievement. You know, every film is supposed to immerse us in a world, but I don't think I've ever seen a film that immersed us in a way of experiencing the world like I did with your film. Can you tell me a little bit about the story, what drew you to it, and what were the building blocks of creating this world that Edwards' character has to enter because it's, it's all new to him? Uh, and, and I don't know if it was new to you as well. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> but you look I'm like still you, not. You look like really <laughs> You are. Can you talk a little bit about building this character with Darius? There was a lot that I imagined that was new to you that you had to learn. What did you have to go through to create this character? Um, first of all, I just want to say that when I read the script, it was one of the most profound moving scripts I've ever read. And uh, when I met Darius, I thought he was one of the craziest people I've ever met. <laughs> um, and I think that combination that I saw down this journey of um, building bridges and kind of building a family, you know, um, between people from such different backgrounds and bridging so many different worlds. And, and I'm really grateful for that process. And I'm grateful to Darius for letting us all go on that, on that journey because this is a really bold film to make. And it took him 10 years to get this film made. And I'm just so grateful you made it, man. Thank you so much. In terms of um, the drumming, my drum teacher, Guy Lekata, is here. Guy, can you stand up, please? Yeah. And, um, he, is a, he is a patient man. Is what I say. So yes, it was an intense process of preparation. With um, yeah, uh, it was about six, six and a half months, seven months of drumming every day. And uh, Jeremy Stone, who my character Ruben Stone, he said pick a surname for Ruben. I said Stone because it had to be Jeremy. And um, and yeah, we were signing every day for for six, seven months. Um, sick of me. 
within that process. So it was a, it was a big, um, intensive journey of preparation, but it was a joy, it was enriching, and I just feel really privileged to have been guided through that journey by by these mentors and, and the generosity, um, in particular, of the deaf community in allowing us to, to share a piece of their culture. I wanted to ask about uh, the immersion that the film and your character takes into deaf culture, and your your meeting some people who have been living in that culture for a long time, but for your character it's new, and I imagine for some of you making the film, that was new as well. Can you talk a little bit about that coming together, that conversation between those who, who were already immersed in deaf culture, living in deaf culture, and those who weren't, and, and what might have been involved in, in building that bridge? Well, that was one of the most amazing uh, learning experiences for me, and learning curves, and it was just, it was just incredibly, um, inspiring because I kept having to expand my own understanding of it. You know, we think of deafness as a physical condition, but it became clear to me really quickly that it's a culture. It's not a condition at all. It's a culture. It's a culture of people who live in, and, and are utterly kind of ignored by our society uh, a lot of the time. So I felt very privileged to find my way into that culture. And also, I, I don't know if anybody noticed, but the film is dedicated to um, my grandmother, Dorothy, who actually went deaf um, late in life. And, uh, and not, not too late in life. She went deaf uh, and found herself kind of between two cultures, between the hearing and the deaf uh, culture. And she actually, she was a cinephile and she spent the rest of her life uh, petitioning to get films captioned. So, um, that was very much alive in me and Abe, um, my brother, while we were writing it, and we thought a lot about her. Um, but then the entree into the deaf community, I just feel so privileged to be kind of accepted in. And Chelsea actually gave me a name that's important, that, because otherwise I wouldn't have a name, which is this. <laughs> which um, I'm, I'm very happy to have. And now I can I never shave. I can never shave my beard. <laughs> No, it's amazing to, uh, it makes you, deaf culture is so incredible because it's, it's so different from the world we live in in the sense that, you know, you can't look at your phone while you're talking to someone. You have to be engaged. It's really physical. Um, and 50% of the language takes place in your expressions, in your face. And so it's emotive. And I don't think as hearing people, we emote very much. You know, people say, how are you doing? You say, yeah, good. You know, there's nothing to signify goodness in our face quite often. And so, uh, you know, being within that culture asks us to, to experience our own emotions and actually witness our own emotions. And something certainly that you went through, uh, I know, when you, you had to kind of come to terms with that. And I, I found that very profound. I wonder if there are any comments also from Chelsea, Paul, Dominico, Olivia as well, in terms of that coming together of hearing and deaf culture. Oh, uh, deaf, deaf culture, uh, I'm sorry, the question, just how was it as a, a, a cast and crew making the film to, to build that bridge between the hearing and the deaf cultures on set and in the making of the film? Okay. I, when we were on set, it happened rather quickly. Uh, deaf people are very um, expressive and open, and just the fact that Darius was making a film about the deaf culture, uh, they were pleased as, as hell. They have to be involved because there's, there's not very many uh, movies made about deaf people, and when they do make them, they kind of screw them up. Um, <laughs> they either cast somebody that's not deaf as a deaf person, that culturally deaf, and it never works out. So uh, it, it, it seemed it, it was just a, a very rich experience to be on that farm with, the, with all these deaf people and Liz and uh, Darius. It's just, just like a like a uh, a real family experience. I, I, I don't need the microphone, Paul. So used to be an interpreter. <laughs> okay, well, I just want to thank Darius, Riz, everyone on the team. They gave an enriching experience to be able to show our community the patience to sit and to have the back and forth and to take the time to learn about us and invest in us and, and look at our end result here. And thank you so much for that. Olivia, your role is also a challenge one in the 
film because your character is not going through what uh, what Riz's character is, uh, and you, you have such a strong relationship at the beginning of the film as musicians who are kind of really bonded in that music you're making, and then the bond fractures a little bit. Can you talk a little bit about going through that and, and, and how you got to? Yeah, I think we've all been in those relationships that become quite codependent very quickly, and I think um, what was incredible about Lou and Ruben's relationship is that their bond was based on getting better together, and once they were apart and they found the time to heal themselves, their need for each other wasn't there anymore, which is sometimes the most heartbreaking way to part with someone because there's nothing, there's no visible fissure. Um, so, not going from real life or anything. But... <laughs> <laughs> question was about uh, your character in The Night Of, uh, the series, and the vulnerability in that character and the connection to the vulnerability in the character here as well. You know, it's interesting. I think, like, if you asked me five years ago if someone said, yo, I know there's something similar in this character and last character, I'd be like, shit! <laughs> <laughs> Screwed up! <laughs> and, you know, it's interesting. The process of making this film actually shifted how the way I think about acting and what I think is really about. I think, you know, for many of us who um, live our lives having to navigate spaces that aren't of our own making, that have to kind of code switch, that have to wear masks, that have to switch identities from one place to another, we're quite good at putting on masks. And I think for a lot of my life and most of my career, I've been kind of making masks and putting them on. And I think Darius really taught me that actually it's about unmasking and I think there's probably more of me in this character than any other I've played before. And I think that's something I'm learning to embrace as well. And seeing the kind of the pride and the um, unapologetic presence of the people that I've kind of shared this process with. People like Jeremy, people like Chelsea, people like Toledo family. And, um, and in a way, I hope that you kind of see more and more of me going forwards in, in everything I do. So thank you. For the deaf cast members, how long for that process to make the film for your involvement? Can I actually get an answer from the deaf cast members? How many days, how many weeks? Was it one day, two days? The filming, the whole process for you. Can you, can you let us know? It was about a month uh, process, I guess. Sorry, I'm um, being... Sorry, the interpreter's gonna start again. The filming itself, um, I guess the time frame was about a month, but Darius met us, oh, quite in, much in advance. Um, uh, to develop Jen, my character. So we had a lot of discussions in advance about that and the character development. So how long was I involved in making the film? For the film, me? Okay. It took a week. It was maybe a short time to develop my character. And it was really hard to try and control. I forgot how you spell it. <laughs> it was a character that has ADHD, so I kind of, my character was lacking self-control. I really enjoyed the filming with everyone. and. And like, I had fun, so thank you to Darius for all of it. Thank you. Thank you.